Well, it's time to talk about dogs and how many of them are unsung heroes who serve in search and rescue, military, and in therapy. Uh, today's Big Blend Radio Show is dedicated to Veterans Day and our veterans, uh, those who have served our country. And uh, we have travel writer Corey Solomon back on the show to talk about dogs. Normally, she's on our second Friday uh, food wine travel show with the International Food Wine Travel Writers Association talking about wine. But today, she's going to talk about dogs, and she knows all about dogs. She is, well, she she has Salukis, and she travels with them and goes to dog shows. And um, so anyway, she's on to talk about dogs today, and I encourage you to go to her website, writtenpalette.com. So welcome back, Corey. How are you? I am great. It's a great day cool. today. It is a yes, great day is. today, and, and I'm very excited. Um, and so I do want to tell listeners that if you hear weird noises, um, Nancy and I pet sit as we travel across the country on our Love Your Park store. And today um, I have two pugs sitting at my feet, and they are both snoring. And so they snore and snort, so it's kind of appropriate. But I don't think pugs would make it into search and rescue. Do you think so, Corey? Oh, they might. <laughs> They might. You never know what dog, but typically most dogs in search and well, search and rescue, no. But you know, military dogs, I don't know. But you know, we've had military mascots. Some of them have been small, so you know, um, it, I think it really depends. But most dogs are the, your bigger breed dogs for both search and rescue and for military use. Mm-hmm. What I, What about terriers? Because terriers are pretty like. I always think we've had the um, National Search and Rescue Foundation on our show, um, National Disaster Search Dogs Foundation, excuse me. And I know you cover this in your article and everyone up on blendradioandtv.com. Just type in Veterans Day or Dog Soldier. You know, you'll find uh, Corey's article on there. Um, but you talk about that foundation, and I know it was many years ago. I'm going to say probably 10 years ago they were on the show uh, with Regina Leeds talking about, and she's the Zen organizer, but she's also volunteers at this foundation they were talking about dogs that are in search and rescue like at 9-11 that um, they use these dogs and they're those almost like they'll just keep going your dog needs to be one of those dogs that keep going after a ball that will play with a ball in the yard like nonstop. and from what we've discovered terriers seem to fit that bill for some reason <laughs> just going after the ball you know well or, the ones I've met because I've done a couple um events with the National Disaster Search Dog Foundation, most of them have been bigger dogs. They're your Labradors, Golden Retrievers, Border Collies. Um, Those are the ones I, you know, what most of the dogs are. I I don't, I specifically have not seen where it's been a a terrier. Hmm. So, but I'm sure they do. It just, you know, it's it's interesting to see how they must be toy driven or you know and some of the dogs don't make it even though they think they've got that quality they just don't make it and then this, they do place them in homes which is a good another good part of mm. this, uh National Disaster Search Dog Foundation Hmm. And and I think it's it's interesting about how dogs that we use them in World War 2 um I know we were talking about that with Trevor Jones on our show a couple of months ago, but um, dogs, they were dog soldiers where families sent their pets to Nebraska to be trained to be part of World War II. And it was interesting in your article, you touch on not only are they part of the service, but these dogs, part of it is actually to to help the those who are out in, in war, the fighters, the soldiers, um, that the dogs are there to comfort them too. It is because when that when the you know uh, I'll use a battalion or whatever the different groups are I'm, I'm not totally and I don't know all the military lingo but you know when a member of their team they lose well when they lose a member of their team you know they feel that and I'm talking about a human member mm-hmm. um, the dogs can comfort. And that's mm. really important, especially when you're in, if you think of yourself in a battle and, you know, it's, I mean, I'm looking at it mm. from my perspective, you know, it would be, a, to me, very scary. I, I would not be qualified to be in the military, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, it. I think 
you know, you you need something like that. I mean, mm-hmm. it, yeah. it it's very helpful. It's, it's interesting it's like because a lot of firehouses have dogs too, Nancy. Don't you think? That, isn't there always a firehouse mm-hmm. dog? There's well, the Dalmatian was historically the dog of choice, and I read later a long time ago because I used to have Dalmatians. Well, a lot of Dalmatians are born deaf, and then I was thinking, well, maybe it's the fire engine sound. Maybe that's why they chose a Dalmatian because a lot of them would not react to the sirens. I don't know. Just hmm. thinking about it that way, it's interesting. But I, I don't know myself. Yeah, the Dalmatians hmm. are incredibly loyal dogs, but they can go a little um, frazzled. You know, cause hmm. we had so many kids in our in our family, and I think the Dalmatians were a little bit like, "Wow, this is too many for me." But hmm. <laughs> you know, but hmm. they're really they're sweet dogs. They really are. Hmm. Yeah. So, so they help, Working but then dogs. they also. They also go out, you talk about military mascots, but um, you were talking about a dog, Suji, um, that mm-hmm. is, is a sea dog. So we've got dogs that are going out to World War II, but there's, do- there's firehouse dogs. I mean, we also know mm-hmm. Border Patrol uses dogs. They sniff out cocaine coming over the border or weed mm-hmm. or whatever's going on, and um, you have them at airports. You ha- I mean, dogs are used, canine dogs. I mean, think about um, the mounted policemen on horseback. So, you know, horses mm-hmm. and dogs, I think, those two animals and mules and, and donkeys have been used by human beings for absolutely no, for you know, sure. centuries. And dogs often get overlooked, so that's why I'm really glad you, you brought this up, Corey. Um, but Suji, this was, this was a – Suji went, went on a submarine. They put a dog on a that's submarine. Weird. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, the crew found the dog, and he, um, he was, went for – was it – Five combat tours, um, so he was part of definitely a part of uh, the crew, um, and I think it helped a lot. From what you know, I'm I'm getting the story from my husband because it was my father-in-law's. Um, um, he was on that ship for oh, I don't wow. remember how many tours. So yeah, so this is a story. That um, that I heard, you know I didn't find out about till after um, my he- uh, my father-in-law passed away. So, but when I found that we started researching, looking through all his naval paperwork, so you know it was kind of fun to put that together. And I always said I'm going to get that article together for Memorial Memorial mm-hmm. Day, and that's when I. I published the article on him, but it, you know, it, it, there again, I saw where the dog was helped them know when, it, when there was a, uh, when a bomb was detonated, he could, um, he could, hmm. uh, he could hear it before the crew did and he'd get down on the ground and let them mm-hmm. know, uh, so, I'm wow. sorry, the word is depth charges. It's not a, you know, so, but, um, you know, at the same time, he brought them joy on the boat. I mean, they used to feed him ice cream and and he'd sleep on all their bunks and, and you know, so he was a part, part of the crew that helped humanize, I, I guess is the best word, the, this period of time that was obviously very challenging. Mm. Well, they do have a dogs have a superior sense of sight, smell, you know, and smell and hearing that we don't have. Mm. So, you know, it makes sense that they could help out once they understand what is needed and expected of them. Dogs are incredibly loyal to humans as long as they're treated fairly and correctly. They, mm. you know, it's like they think of us as part of their pack. And they join in and, you know, they're not one of those like a loner animal like a leopard is never going to join a pack and help a human. That's not their deal. But a dog, just to a pack. So we mm-hmm. are a substitute for their natural pack. And they join in and do what they can. And they have, like I said, superior sense of sight, hearing, and smell that we don't have. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I, I remember doing an article 
actually it's one I won an award for with the Dog Writers Association, um, a winery dog. But they brought him on because their their um, the vineyard overseer was deaf, so the dog was his mm. ears. And then what was interesting about it is later in life this dog became blind, so oh. this dog helped a handicapped person and then became handicapped and needed mm. to help. And it was a gr- it's a great it was a great oh. um, story, yeah. but, you know, it, sh- it shows how we in return need to help, can help them too. And mm-hmm. one of the things you find, and I'm going to go back to the search and rescue because um, is the handler for each of the search and rescue becomes very attached to these dogs so that the, when oh, they yeah. retire, they don't have to find a new home. They stay with, uh, usually stay with the handler um, and then the handler gets a new uh, search and rescue dog. So uh, I, I was emailing uh, Abby was one that went to 911, and I just happened to be in getting information about Pearl, who we can talk about in a minute. She mentioned to me she still misses Abby. You know, so mm-hmm. they pl- they they really pay a profound part of their life, even. Because after they retire, they're not working dogs anymore. They're they're pets. They mm-hmm. are. They still love. And as I, what I was told about Pearl is, and then we can get into the story. Is she still loved her toys to the very end? Mm-hmm. And yeah. So when they when they do pass on, it's a hard loss for the handler because they become very attached. Yes. Yep. I know. As as just us doing pet sitting. We we have these moments where you do bond with the animals, and you know it's you're so like fun. the replacement family for the the family that's on vacation. And some of these dogs are used to someone being home all the time, so you're there, and they know their routines. I mean, they don't have a clock, but they have a clock. They have a dog clock, they and do. they know when they get fed. Clock. They know treat time. They know walking time. They know TV time. Dogs absolutely. know TV time. It's absolutely mm-hmm. crazy. People, I, I want to tell everybody, put in your guidebook when TV time is, but you don't need to because the dogs will let you know it's time to turn the TV on. Okay, and a so, I know, <laughs> cats do it too. But there's this thing where you really do bond with the dogs and some of them sleep with you and everything, which is fine with us for sure. But when you, you have this um, new language with a dog, each thing is different, but you end up, you communicate in a way, you know, just through looking at each other and just the voice and recognizing habits. Okay. This is your, or personalities, their character, just like you would a human being. Cause you know, it's body language that you have this communication with, but when we leave, I don't care if it's two nights that we're staying or a week or a month. I know. It's so you, sad. You, you get, you, the owners come back. Or I shouldn't say owners, the, 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 the homeowners, um, the pet parents come back and you're like, you know, you almost want to say you, you can't come here. <laughs> this is our dog now. You get all you get My teary dog eyed. Now. Yeah, I know. It's like you get you get teary eyed, and it's you drive off, and you have this absolute somber time in the car where we're like we're gonna cry. And yeah. You you really get <laughs> upset, and it's the same thing when you lose one. Um, when one does go over the rainbow bridge, it's a really difficult thing because they are so part of your family. And they remember you. There's dogs that will meet us mm-hmm. once. We did that recently with a pet sit. We met the dogs for one afternoon, one lunch with, with the uh, pet parents. And we went there at night, you know, and they weren't there. They'd already traveled on. And those dogs remembered us. And well, so sure. it is amazing to me about how connected dogs are. I mean, it's just that. So I can imagine for someone who serves and the horrors they're going through every single day and also what comes home when, you know, military men and women and, you know, police force, the armed forces go home um, or come home from a tour. They have been through something very traumatic. So I can imagine the importance of a dog for them when they come home, too. They're just they're part of us. Yes. Well, so I, love dogs, man. <laughs> I love dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but think about how many times um, you see, and I think I just saw on the internet, a soldier comes back and he befriended a, do- a, one, a stray dog 
and they're trying to find ways to get that dog back to the United States for the soldier. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, so they do play, even the dogs that they find, that it it kind of plays a part in that, in, you know, they become mm-hmm. attached. It doesn't, you know. But there are, you know, to me, animals are people. They're just people in a different form. With fur. You know, so, with your Mexican yeah, short hair. <laughs> Well, Careless. no, they're just, they're just people in a different form. They have the same emotions. They really do. And, and if you, even, even, you know, I know people think, okay, mammals may or may not have emotions, but if you're going to say uh, an animal form will have emotions, they're going to look at dogs and cats, but they're not going to look at birds as having emotions. And quite frankly, I I have to go out there and say, you're really wrong about that. Every living thing has emotions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They really do. You can see anger when a bird gets mad. You can see that. So I don't know. I just think we're, we're always putting ourselves so far above everything else that's living. And I just think that maybe we should, like dial back on that a bit. That, it sounds like Colonel Brandon agrees with you, Nancy. <laughs> Colonel yeah, Brandon, no, I love Colonel Brandon. To, Mark, I don't know if our listeners here. Colonel ever. I know. You're, I know. You're, you're, you're babysitting the appropriate dog, Colonel Brandon. Yes, Colonel Brandon. Say. He's I know. And we've got Lenny. Thing. I want to say Lenny Bruce, but then that's a comedian that was a know. you know a naughty comedian. So I can't call him Lenny Bruce, but I, I keep doing it. But yeah, I mean this connection. I mean, that, is that something for you too, Corey? I know with your Salukis, um, you tour, you travel with them. Part of what you do as a travel writer, I want to touch on this because this is part of you know who you are and what you do is you know, being with Salukis and traveling with them and going to the hotels that, you know, allow dogs. Yes, I do. I do travel, not now, but I do travel a lot with my dogs. And it's, you know, when, first of all, a lot of times I'm traveling alone. So it is, you have, there is someone there with you and it's, just not another human it's a dog but you'll find you talk to them a lot too when well, you're yeah. traveling alone you know and I've brought the you know they've come up along with me on some of the the travel writing uh ventures that we go on and you know it it makes it a lot e- it, it does make it easier um I, I enjoy it you know it also forces you to take walks you take you travel at a different pace um, I remember we've taken, we've gone a couple times. This was back in the 80s and 90s. I took my dogs to Europe. And one, it opens a conversation with Europeans, so which is kind of nice. I mean, we had some very funny conversations. But it it also, and you're going to laugh, they, the dogs get to have jet lag too. Um, and because hmm. I remember one hotel that locked us, locked, locked their doors, they said, and I had to ask to go out because the dog needed to go out at like three in the morning, which isn't typical. And he said, Did they always do that? And I go, no, it has jet lag, you know? So, you know, um, but it does, it, it does force you to slow because you have to, you have to make sure you give them their walking time, the different things you have to do that, you know, you make sure you have to look out for them as well as your yourself, mm. but, it you do go at a different pace and maybe it makes you appreciate some things more because you are you're not just doing the touristy things you're walking around seeing and having people stop and talk to you so you're meeting the people in whatever place that you're you're visiting so and it's a good way to to meet um you know if you're looking for a new date (laughs) Sometimes oh. dogs <laughs> go to a well, dog park. I never had to worry about that. <laughs> Although know, my husband I, I, did I have to pass the dog test. No, you <laughs> know, but exactly right, the dog test. But, you know, I'm just saying, you know, oh for those gosh, out there, do, I don't do that. But but it is, you know, being pet sitters, like some dogs are travel, <laughs> are cool with travel. Some dogs really want to stay at home with their routine. And the pet sitting thing, we walk dogs. And it's you're absolutely right about slowing down and travel. You're you're now becoming more of a local when you do this. You're walking their community parks, maybe the downtown. There's all kinds of places you can go with dogs, and then it 
it starts to teach you about do people you have community parks and places where dogs can go walkies and be comfortable. So I think it's a really, I like it. Pers- I love our dog walks. But just staying on travel, Corey, um, you know, as we travel, we go to historic sites, a lot of national historical parks and uh, monuments. Um, all of that are part of it. And part of your article, too, um, it really highlights some of these monuments that are out there. You have a military women's memorial, you have memorials and monuments, um, and some of these um, monuments and memorials. Uh, you have one that's um, a monument for the military working dog uh, program manager. So there is actual historic sites we can put on our on our GPS as we travel. Mm-hmm. Yes, and they, mm-hmm. you know, it's they need to be. They are getting the dog is getting recognized too because if you think about it in battle, it's the scouts who are the first to go into the battlefield. Well, they got, the scouts have the dogs to go out. So they're one of the first to go out. And mm-hmm. I guess they would be the first to have, they have the most risk being one of the first. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, that, that the dogs, um, and then for them to even get on airplanes and stuff like you were talking about, that's a whole other deal, you know, that they're going through. And imagine going to war with your dog is now here. You're going off to war. Even think about World War II. The airplanes were not the same airplanes as we're used to. It's not first class with champagne with your dog. You know, unless it, maybe if it was a chihuahua now, you know, remember the whole thing with chihuahuas in your bag? <laughs> People no. did, but, and still do. Um but when you look at um, them taking dogs overseas, being on those planes and, and military aircraft, that had to be scary for the dogs. You had to have that relationship to get through that together, that bond. Well, I also think uh, many of them were, were also on ships. And if you think they're not like our luxury liners or, I mean, I, I remember my husband took me on a, one of the a version of the submarine that my father-in-law was on. And I went, he was, and, you know, I'm coming from a different era. This was, it was like, it's so cramped. It's like, you know, it's, there's no, it's not what, you know, it's basic. And, you know, but for, <laughs> that was how a lot of them initially got away from home. I mean, for my father-in-law, that was the most exciting time of his life. And he always talked about it. Um, so, you know, it was a different kind of t- different time than what we have today. So it's hard to compare. I mean, I know they have military dogs now, but, you know, even when I've seen the search and re- pictures of search and rescue flying on planes today, it looks a lot nicer than it probably did then, you know. Mm. Well, when we... When when we go to San Antonio, Nancy, we need to go to the Military Working Dog Team's National Monument. We need cool. to go do that. Yeah. Sure. We need to do that and check that out because it's a national monument. It's got to be on our list to do. And, you know, and it's, I think it's, I'm glad that they do have, you know, dogs represented in this because I think they get forgotten. It's kind of like they're almost just part of the family. So, you know, how we we forget to be nice to our family. Sometimes we're nicer to our friends. <laughs> You know, I mean, like we we need to to really understand that and and see that. But some of these sculptures of the dogs are just so dead on. It's amazing. It's amazing how they capture that. You know, and, and we can put that on our list as we travel. All of us can, and just stop at the military sites. You know, that these monuments are important for that. To stop it at all of the military. Think. Well, like, it makes you think. Mm-hmm. You know, of mm-hmm. things you forget about. You might have learned you know, a bit of it in history and in, in school. And then it co- it's not in your mind all the time. Mm-hmm. And then, then you go to a monument. It makes you really think about what, what went into building different countries and how we got to where we are now, whether mm-hmm. you like where we are now or not, it, you know, steps forward. It wasn't just mm-hmm. human. Never has been. It's always been it, uh, more than humans. It's, it's, it's with dogs and horses and different animals by, that we use for food. It, we're not here doing everything on our own by ourselves. It's, mm. No. Uh-uh. So we basically, I know this is Veterans Day programming, but it's Veterans Day and Memorial Day to, to honor our canine friends. 
both those days. And we should honor them every day. You know, that's mm-hmm. why I'm glad you have this article. It's something that we should always go back to. I, I want to go back to Suji because Suji, the, the photos of Suji, Suji is so cute. This does not look like a military dog that's going to kick butt. But Suji is cute. That is just the cutest. Well, if you look picture, at the photos. One was a, a when he was a puppy, and they found him as a puppy on at the, I, I don't know where exactly, but, you know, they they found him wandering the streets and they brought him mm. on and the, the captain allowed the dog. In fact, the captain took the dog at the end. Um, but um, he grew into a big dog from the pictures I could find. So, yeah. you know, so if you, if he was as big as he looked from the pictures, he took a, up a lot of space on those bunks and they were small. Probably had his own, you know. yeah, like his own little bunk, you know. It's amazing to see those photos um, going back in time. Now, the one lady um, that you also, we do have to, Pearl is so cute. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just like you just wouldn't think, you know. Um, but there was also um, the Military Women's Memorial. Um, I think that's really important, too, when we think about, we've got to think about women in military. It's something also that's not discussed as much, and I think that's important. So many women serve. And when you see what women go through to make it through the the boot camp and the trials to make it into being a full-fledged, you know, I'm out there on the front lines. It's incredible the strength of these women women go through to do this. And it's cool that some of them have been able to work with dogs as well. Uh, So you're covering that too, which is neat. Well, it was kind of interesting because someone sent me the article about this memorial, which just opened up. And, uh, it, I guess the the artist that they chose for the sculpture was actually um, she. Most of her sculptures are do, uh, dogs, and I realized when I was going through it that and looking at some of her sculptures because she's done a lot of military dog sculptures, but she's done others too. And when I had gone and. I want to say 2010 or 2012 to the AKC Museum of the Dog. My dog happened to step up in front of one of her sculptures, and I've got. A, I was looking back at the pictures, and I'm going, "That's her sculpture." And hmm. so she's known for doing these. And so, you know, I thought it was interesting that when that she, um, her, let me give you her name if I can find it. Uh, her name is Susan Bahari, and. It, I thought it was interesting that when she was asked to do the woman's monument sculpture, that she chose to include a dog in in the sculpture. So I thought it was mm. very poignant. Mm. Mm. I like that. I like that a lot. That's important. Now, Pearl was a search and rescue dog. Pearl, you'd look at Pearl, and oh, she was more on the therapy side, right? The search and rescue. No, but, she with Pearl. Pearl yeah, she was, was search and rescue. rescue. Wow. She was honored. I actually have met, have, had met Pearl, and she, I also did a drawing of Pearl. Um, I didn't include that in the pictures I sent you, but I did do. She impacted me quite a bit, and so um, she went to, I think, Haiti. She went to uh, Fiji as search and rescue. Um, she became a... ASPCA's Hero Dog of the Year. And that's when I was asked. I had already started writing about her because of the way I discovered her. But then the ASPCA asked me to write about her when she received her honor. And so I I went through a lot, and I just found out that she had passed away. So because I'm attached to her, there's going to be one more article about Pearl. I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> but... Um, so she, she, you know, she's one of, she went through, I don't know how many, um, I think she's gone through more, been on more um, search and rescue calls abroad because she was on her, uh, Ron, her handler is, um, he is, uh, he's on the international task force team. So they're the ones that go to, uh, out on the internet, a lot of international ones. That's why she was in Haiti and in, uh, she went to Japan. Oh, wow. 
Well, thank you for bringing this to everyone's attention. You know, for I know uh, many of us probably have heard of search and rescue dogs and and military dogs and armed forces dogs in the armed forces, but it's just really good to re-highlight and um, keep them in our forefront because they do a lot. Just like I say, like horses and and everything. Um, you know, so many animals are part of our our livelihood and have made it possible for us to to live. Um, before you go, Corey, I did want to ask you: were, were Saluki, What's up with you and Salukis? Is this a, is there a certain thing about Salukis for you? Is it something? Did you have Salukis as a kid? Nope. Uh, the, there's a funny story about it. I was I saw this in a newspaper an ad for a Saluki, and uh, I called my mom and I said, "Can you look this up?" And she said, "You know this fits you. They're they're." Tall, tall, sleek dogs, and I'm very petite. And it, you know how a lot of people look like their dogs. I guess I look like the Saluki. Well, I wasn't going to say and, anything, but <laughs> <laughs> and it just sort of happened that you know I got involved with the Uh-oh. breed. Someone's talking now. Um, I got involved with the breed, and I got hooked. And you know, I just you know, got more and more into the breed. And that's, so I've had Salukis. We've had, the family has had Salukis since the seven, mid-70s. Um, I got my first, well, I got my first Saluki, but it, we didn't end up keep, well, it's a long story, but she, she got out and we never, we never found her. So my mom kept Salukis from that point on, but I got, I really got my first Salukis in the mid-80s. And oh, have been hooked on them ever since. Wow, wow. Well, the pugs are saying hello to your Saluki. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know, we've been doing recordings all day long, and this one they decide to bark on just about every few minutes here. So there you I go. It's appropriate. <laughs> they know. They know. They're like, hello, you're talking about my people, man. <laughs> so that's really cool. Uh, they're very sweet. I, all dogs rock, man. It's, it's awesome. But, yeah, people do look like their dogs. It is interesting. And, and you know, it's, it's there's something. I think it's like even when you look at couples, people are attracted to certain things that are connected to themselves. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, it's. Some couples, you go like, you could be a brother and sister, you know. <laughs> Oopsie, <laughs> you know? it's it's just oh, well. an interesting. Well, that's what. No, I don't mean it that way. I mean how biology is. Okay, I'll stop talking now. All right, <laughs> obviously you need to keep moving on. But uh, Corey, we want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for the awesome article, everyone. Again, it's on blendradioandtv.com. Also, keep up with Corey and her travels. Go to writtenpalette.com. We also want to give a shout out to our uh, shows every second Friday with the International Food, Ride, Food Wine Travel Writers Association and keep up with them, uh, ifwtwa.org, and fo- follow them on social media if you love to travel. Um, you'll see stories from travel writers around the world, and um, especially if you're armchair traveling right now or getting getting ready to plan trips, um, you know, COVID's up and down, but um Keep yourself in entertained and in this, in keep up to what's going on in different places across the country by following IFWTWA on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And so we always love to play music. And since this is a special show about military dogs and our military forces, uh, which are part of them, and today's show is all about Veterans Day and honoring those who have served, uh, this is a song called Colors of the USA. We want to play that. This is by Doreen Taylor, and she wrote this song connected to our National Park Service because our National Park Service, not only do we have places like Yosemite and Yellowstone, but we also have numerous historic sites. In fact, three quarters of our National Park Service are historical destinations. Doesn't mean there isn't nature, though, but um, this song is dedicated to our national parks and also our historic sites. So it's called Colors of the USA. You can keep up with Doreen at DoreenTaylorMusic.com. Thanks so much for joining us, Corey. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Mr. 
so many colors Like this mighty land of mine This world around me changes Every day is something new Colors on the screen they Proudly shine right through You